Hello and welcome Sim Rally fans. Today I am going to teach you the ins and outs of how to set up a rally car. Finally, many of you have been asking for this video for many years. So we're going to dive in now and I'm going to teach you all about the settings. So obviously the first thing we come to in this setting car setups is alignment. Um, it's actually the last thing you are going to be touching. So we're going to skip over that for now. Uh, for braking, this is going to be a little interesting. This is going to be a lot of trial and error for you. Um, to set your braking force and your bias, the idea behind this is to, when your brake pedal is at 100% travel, you are just locking your wheels. So you'll need to keep going backwards and forwards. And you need to be locking all four wheels simultaneously when your brakes are at 100%. So when you've got that pedal pressed 100%, and all four wheels are locking simultaneously, that's when you know you've got good brake set up. Um, so obviously for this car, this is already set up for the dry at Monte Carlo, which is the uh, the 208 Rally 4. Um, I've settled on 74% and the brake pressure at 279, 1950 newton meters. Um, your handbrake force is pretty self-explanatory. Um, basically what you want when you pull that handbrake, you want those rear wheels to lock. So if your brakes pressure is set at what it is now, 2719, and we're just locking at hundred percent force to make sure your rear wheels are locking when you pull the handbrake at hundred percent force, you want to be just a couple over that. So if I go back to, and we've got the brake pressure matched with the handbrake force. So you just up it a couple. And that will make sure that when you pull your handbrake at 100%, you're going to be locking those rear wheels. Don't really need them in front wheel drive cars because you just go slower every time you pull the handbrake, unless it's an acute corner, of course. Uh, differentials. This is going to be a bit of a tricky one to explain, but basically you're balancing how well the car rotates through a corner to how much traction you have. So as you can see here, I've slightly adjusted it from the default and I believe the default was this. So what I do in order to make sure I've got the balance and the rotation or well, the traction and the rotation for how I like a car to handle, um, I always from the default is up the preload to and drop the driving lock and the braking lock one. That's my preferred default standard setup for any car, be it four wheel drive, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive. That will always end up being those adjustments from the default setup in the game. And it actually serves me very well. Obviously, you know, many of you know me, I can take a world record, but that's the biggie. If you don't have the traction and the car doesn't rotate properly to how you like it, you're never going to be able to drive a car at its limit. So you've got, just got to play around with this. But typically, if I'm moving the preload up to, I'm moving the driving lock and the braking lock down one. So that's pretty straightforward for that. Uh, gears. The whole point of the gears is to make sure at the end of the longest straight, you're just hitting the limiter just as you're about to hit the brakes for the corner. So if you're going down the straight and you're going ba ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da you're just going to be losing time every time you're hitting that limiter. So I always find the longest straight that I possibly can for a location and set the gears up accordingly. Now to adjust the gears, all I've ever done is the, this as the following. So say we've got that 990, we're happy with the top end of the car, but Short, uh, the first gear is a little bit short. So what I would do in that situation is adjust fourth gear one, third gear two, second gear three, and first gear four. If it actually moved four then. Four, there we go. So that's how we would adjust that. Um, for the opposite end, if, you, if your gears are too long and you're not hitting the limiter at the end of the longest straight, you can adjust the gears in the opposite direction. So second by one, 
third by two, fourth by three, and fifth by four. Now, ideally, you don't want to be going over one because that's like for if you go above one, that's generally for like fuel saving measures. You only use that as last resort if you're on an extremely fast stage where you've got the final drive maxed out, but the car's still hitting the limit out. That's the only time you should be taking that above one. And that goes if the car's got five, ge six gears and seven gears as well. Right, so we we'll just revert those changes, put that back where it was. For damping, this is where you set the firmness of your ride, not with the springs. Springs are for absorbing bumps. So with the firmness, a, the standard firmness as you're driving along normally on a nice smooth road, that will be down to the slow bump. However, when it starts getting rough and bumpy and the car gets skittish, that's where your fast bump comes into play. Now, you should always have your fast bump set lower than your slow bump, 100%. If you're going around a corner and you clip something on the inside and the car rolls over, that's your fast bump too, basically too high. It'll put that back on four, your bump zone division. Now, not many people understand this, but it is actually relatively straightforward. Bump zoned, bump zoned division, or bump division, as it's now called. Um, basically, if you move the slider bar to the right, it brings the fast bump in later, which then automatically makes the entire car setup softer. Now, you can play around with this, but typically, I always have it set where my slow rebound is. But in situations of high degradation on the stages, you might just want to plus one on that. So that will give you a nice firm level feeling because the whole idea of a car setup is to keep all the wheels on the ground for as long as possible. If your wheels are off the ground, you're not in control of your car. You're not accelerating. You're just deaccelerating. So uh, your slow rebound. This is a stability control for the dampers. This should either be matching your slow bump or higher. Not too much higher, typically one, sometimes two. This will also keep the car lower when you're doing the jumps. Because obviously if the springs will allow your car to go higher, you're going to take off higher. That same goes for the fast bump as well on the jumps. If that's set too high, you get in a spring effect. So when you actually reach the crest of the jump, the car will actually spring off and go higher. If you have a low fast bump and a high rebound, keeps the car lower to the ground, which means you can still take the jumps at full throttle, land the car safely, hopefully, um, and it will basically reduce the arc of that jump. So you won't jump as far, but you're going faster, which is why I've always set the cars up in this damper configuration. Now we're moving on to springs and right, the springs roll bars and your ride height. With the ride height, obviously asphalt, you're gonna be way down low. Now, you've also got rough stages, you're gonna be way up high. Yeah, uh, so I say like this, and you notice how it's still on minus 26. This is because we're on asphalt at the moment for Monte Carlo. On gravel, this will go up to about plus 50. It will change automatically. So don't be surprised that, oh, I've moved the slider bar right five for my asphalt setup, but I've also done it for the um, for a gravel setup as well. It changes automatically between the surface types. So don't worry about too much of the slider bar position. Just worry about the actual values on the right hand side of them. So I'll just move these back down. Now, the default springs and roll bars in this game are actually pretty good. You mainly, you're only just messing around with the dampers. The springs and roll bars actually are not too shabby. But if you're finding it, the car a little bit too springy and it's flicking around just a little bit and you want to settle it down, obviously just move the spring rate right to a lower setting so you'll be moving it to the left. Um, but if you do that, I highly recommend that you up the roll bars from where they are. So from the default, 
on this setup. Um, I think I've gone, yeah, so. Uh, this is where the spring rate was at the normal, and this is where the roll bars were at the default. So all I've done is reduce the springs one and up the roll bars two. Okay, so that's relatively straightforward. Obviously, if you're on gravel, your springs, you're going to want a little softer, same as your roll bars. Another thing you can do uh, with the springs and roll bars is... Uh, balance the car. Uh, this is where you do it. You can also do minor adjustments with the, um, the toe. That could help balance the car, but it's, it's very minor. The big adjustments for car balance are going to be in with the springs and roll bars. Like I said, the defaults are very good with the balance. Um, but if you like the, want the car to understeer a bit more because you find the back end's coming out a bit much, um, this is how you adjust it. Uh, you would, in to decrease the amount of oversteer, you just drop the rear anti-roll bra compared to the front. Um, alternatively, if you want more understeer, uh, more oversteer, you increase the rear anti-roll bar. So let your front anti-roll bar be set on how firm you want the car to move left and right when you're going through the corners or how much roll you want it, because that's what it's meant to do. It's meant to stop the car, car body from rolling. So obviously the flatter you have the car uh, through a corner, the better it's going to handle, uh, which is, like I say, the long radius corners are going to be the best bet, the best bet, best part where you're going to figure out how you set your anti-roll bars. Because if you feel like the car's leaning over too much, you just increase them both the same uh, from the default. Uh, but if you're not happy with the balance overall, you lower the rear anti-roll bar to increase understeer and increase the rear anti-roll bar to increase oversteer. Um, you can also do that with the springs as well, but I'd be careful too much playing around with the spring rates front to rear. Because the if you increase the rear spring too much, when you come at a crest at a jump, it can increase uh, it can make a flicking effect, so you'll end up landing heavy on the nose on some of the jumps. Um, so just be careful about how much you increase the uh, rear spring rates compared to the front. But the defaults, nine times out of ten, are pretty much on point in terms of balance. So this takes us on to the final part of our setup, which is alignment. Now there's a reason why I say do this last. Uh, it's simply because if you've changed how soft or firm the overall suspension setup is with the springs and the dampers, uh, you will need to adjust these accordingly. So if you've gone soft on your suspension setup uh, for asphalt, you're going to need to reduce the amount of camber. And the, cause the reason why you've gone soft in the first place is because you've got no grip, so for wet weather situations. But if you've made it stiffer, you will need to increase the amount of camber because now you've got grip, you want the car to be able to hold the road at those speeds. And the whole aim of camber when you're adjusting it is when you're at the highest possible speed at a corner, at the car's maximum load before it starts understeering, is you want the surface of the tyre, so that's the tread, to be dead flat on the road. Now, if obviously, if, say, this is the outside wheel, that's your negative camber, that's your positive camber, you want to be dead flat with the surface of your tyre. So if you've started to arch over like that, you're losing grip. If your tyre's still like this, you're losing grip. The flatter the tyre is at maximum load, the more grip you're going to have throughout all the corners. So this is why I always say adjust this last. Uh, your toe, um, it's the same for front wheel drive and all wheel drive cars. You're pretty much going to be matching front and rear. So if you've got point one at the front, you're going to have point one at the rear. And the less grip you have, the less toe you're going to have. So for Sweden, for instance, you're going to be zero. 
because anything other than that, it just makes the car start stepping out through the corners uh, more than I would like anyway. Everyone's slightly different. You might want it to step out a bit more, so you might want it at point one. But for me, on snow, uh, snow equals no toe um, is how I remember it. Uh, but for asphalt driving, you're going to be pretty much at point two front and rear. Positive for the front, negative for the rear. So with all that in mind, I think that's pretty much the ins and outs of it all. Oh, uh, dampers. Don't be surprised if your gravel and your asphalt setups have the same settings. They actually change automatically in the background just to make the car setups a little bit simpler for everybody to create, uh, which is actually a nice touch from Codemasters, but no one's ever actually picked up on this which is why in the past where you've seen my asphalt and gravel setups, they're pretty much running identical damper settings. Uh, right, so the only thing left to do now is to show you, when you do get the car in the zone, is how it handles. So, so what I'm going to do as I'm going through this, I'm not going to go for a world record because, well, I already have it. Um, so I'm not going to be beating myself so if anyone wants a crack at this uh, one this is a uh, Pratt de la Lart on uh, Monte Carlo but, like, the maximum load that's like a long radius corner so if your car's understeering there you've got yeah you haven't got enough camber on the go it's slight luck up there because I had the brakes at 100% travel. That's what we want. We just want to be able to do that so the car can ro rotate a bit better into the corners. Um, and the other thing is setups. They um, they make the car handle nicely, but they don't necessarily make you a faster driver. But they do make you a more consistent driver. And with that consistency. You will become a faster driver. If the cars don't handle how you like them, you're never going to improve as a driver. And just sending it round. I mean, I've jumped the start on this anyway. But if I finish the line, if I'll come across the finish line and it's like 9.5. I'm not going to be happy. But yeah, so uh, a few driving tips. Now, there's a reason why I say when you've got the brakes at 100% travel, you want those wheels to be lock in. Because you actually need the wheels to under rotate, not fully lock, to help the car rotate into the corner, just like that bit there. So, I just slightly under rotated the wheels and the back end just started to slide out nicely for me to get that car through the corner. Same here as well. You see how I'm just adjusting the wheel slightly under braking? Is that slight under rotation of the wheels under braking that allows you to rotate the car better. The other thing is line of le least resistance. And by that, I mean you're giving the car no other choice but to be on the opposite side of the corner on the exit. So we go in here, we're giving the car no choice. Well, I'd slightly overcook that one. Let's try again on the next corner. See, so I gave the car no choice but to be exactly there. Same here. So if you're going through a corner and your car still is able to turn without a slight little bit of screeching, you're not going fast enough through the corner. That's the only way you're really going to massively improve your lap times. And that all boils down to stage knowledge. A cheeky handbrake there. That corner's always caught me out. Here I am using the flappy paddles like a little gamer. <laughs> Got a mag shift that I could pull on here. <laughs> Literally in the middle of the camera. Right, so it's a nice. Uh, just give the car no choice to get through the corners. You see how sweet the car's handling as well. It's not 
really understeering, it's not kicking out, under braking too much. It's just holding the road nicely. Let's give the car no choice. See how close I got to the wall? This one's quite a difficult corner. Don't really need the handbrake in front wheel drive cars, if I'm honest. Not through that sort of hairpin anyway. Just slows you down. The, the only, yeah, like I said, the only way you get really fast at rally games is learn the stage. And you go, well, that's not real. The rally drivers only only run a stage once, which is true. They do only run it once. They have once to get it right. But they've been up and down that stage over the years, and at least four or five times before they actually get to it that year. So they know which way the corners go. What they don't know is the grip levels on the day. But you're in a computer game, driving TT mode. So your grip levels are always going to be the same. So we should always be driving faster than real life rally drivers if they ever come onto the game. Plus we don't have the fear of death either. The car is handling really nicely on that. Oh, I want to get to the end of the stage. I want to show you the differences between a dry setup and a wet setup. Because it's actually very easy, generic. Uh, tweaks that you can make to your dry setup to get it to handle beautifully in the wet. And it's really, really simple. And it shouldn't be too difficult to, for you guys to remember either. But yeah, I've just... For me, I've had virtually no time to do any setups. I mean, I absolutely love it. But between work and my personal life, it's... I've had no time, so I thought I'd just do this video to help you guys out. Because I can't be there for you, unfortunately. Not to do every car at every location. It's like, well, I'll be on 18 locations. 78 cars, 79 cars, something like that. It's a lot of setups for me to do. But, I mean, I'll uh, still pop in and do ones on the odd occasion. Like this one. I know a few people have asked for some Rally 4 setups for Monte Carlo. No, it is the lowest category of the modern car, so why not? But I'm just driving the stage just to give you a good example of the line of least resistance and giving that car no choice but to be on the opposite side of the corner. So this corner, I want to be right up against there, then there, then clipping that apex, then rushing up against that wall, just dropping a wheel in there. You just want to get, use all the track available to you. It's the only way you can maximize your stage times. I've got to say, this is actually quite tiring. Uh, trying to talk and drive pretty quick at the same time. Give the car no choice but to be on the opposing side. So always remember that when you're rallying and crossing the line. So that's a 7.52. I think, well, I think I was just driving generically slow there. Yeah, so I lost five seconds overall. Uh, if I just go onto leaderboard from there, that's easier. So there we go. That's what I did just before I started recording this video. Uh, it's a 7, 7.37 there, 4.4 seconds faster. And a guy, yeah, he's with a controller, but he is actually pretty handy with that controller. <laughs> uh, right, so we just need to go back to the surface area now. Um, and I'll show you the tweaks that I made. So if I load the setup, we'll load the dry one back up. So for 
adjusting your dry setup, what I've always done is the following. Reduce your toe because you've got less grip. But you're going to be you don't want the car to hold a slide as much with your toe. Uh, so you just want to reduce that. And you also pick up a little bit more straight line speed that you lost because of the friction of the water under the tires. So it's just a slight little tweak there. Uh, but your camber first adjustment for a wet weather setup. This is is I just drop this back pretty much to the default. So I up this by four to 2.2 and I just drop it back simple as that the default setups are actually really good for wet weather because that's what they're designed to do they're designed to be all round generic setups but they're not perfect uh, your brakes um, basically for this I think it was brake pressure down by three uh, your brake balance minus eight so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and then obviously you do the same adjustment for your handbrake as well that you did with the brake force. Somewhere around there, rough. Um, your differentials, this is the biggie. Again, the differentials is always the most important thing. If you ain't got them right, you're going nowhere fast. Uh, so again, you want a two to one ratio on your adjustments. So I've got this at 40 and I'm going to up this to 0.8. But for this car, it was at 0.9 because it's not foolproof, but it's a rough guess. So there's just minor adjustments from this. So if you find the cars rotating too much or spinning off one singular wheel, your preload is where you're going to be adjusting it. Um, so for this car, I upped it for, still found it was a little bit too loose, so I upped it to 90, and that brought the car under control for me and made the world record possible. Uh, for the driving luck, because we've upped that by four, we're going to drop these by two. And your gears, you don't need to adjust the gears if you've already got them. You're pretty much going to be doing the same speed down the straights. The only difference is if you've got... Like a really tight, really tight corners in your stage that's wet, uh, you might want to lower your gears again. So you're just minus four by one, third by two, second by three, first by four again. Or you can just adjust the final drive. That's an easy adjustment, but it doesn't actually have a lot of change in that whole bar. It's about five miles an hour, I think it was. Uh, damping, you leave them alone. You don't need to adjust those. The other adjustment is in your springs, roll bars, and ride height. Um, for wet weather on asphalt, we're going to be upping that one for your ride height because we're going to drop this by one. Because we're driving a little bit slower around the corners, we just need the car a little bit softer. And the next big thing is your roll bars. And this is actually a big adjustment because again, we've got less grip, so we're going to be slow going slower around the corners. So I'm just going to drop these by four. And that is your wet weather setup from your dry weather setup. Nice and easy. Uh, next thing I'm going to tell you is when you have different tire compounds on. Uh, running out of breath all this talking. Uh, right, so when you have different tire compounds on, so we've gone from the soft compound tire in TT dry mode to the wet compound tire in TT mode. And that's the differences between that. So we've upped that by four or five in this occasion, uh, and we've upped those two. So now we're back to where I had it originally. Uh, was it one, two? So yeah, it was at 11. So when you have, when you swap to the medium compound tires, it's just this, all you need to do in the adjustment section um, for this is up that one, drop that one. Well, in fact, I think for front wheel drive cars, it's literally just going to be upping that uh, because they have a lower braking luck than four wheel drive cars. So I think four wheel drive, you'd probably be up around here. So you'd adjust, drop them both two and then up that one. Same go, the same adjustment again, 
with a hard tongue, hard compound tires. Oh, uh, Monte Carlo snow and ice. You have a combination. So whatever your dry settings were, your dry soft settings were for your braking luck, uh, driving luck and your braking luck, keep those and have your preload set at 100 because you're on snow and ice. It's just traction, traction, traction. That's all you need. You don't need to be able to turn the car fast because it ain't going to be turning fast. So you just have that 100%. Well, I say 100%, 100 newton meters. That's the key difference. 100, 100 newton meters is not 100% luck. The braking luck and the driving luck are in percentages, not the preload. So 100 newton meters is not 100% luck. That's just 100 newton meters force is required to break, well, to basically allow these to do their thing. So that's what the preload is. That gives you that basic. That's the thing that gives you the traction to come out of the corners with. So, like I said before, if your wheels, are, you've got an inside wheel spinning up as you're coming out of corner, and you don't want that to happen, because, well, it shouldn't be happening. It's your preload you're adjusting. So the other thing you'll need to change for Monte Carlo snow and ice is your springs, uh, your ride height and your roll bars as well. Um, so basically, whatever your just whatever adjustments you've made from your dry to your wet, you're going to be doubling those from wet to snow and ice. Uh, so for me, we had the this was the wet weather setup. So for snow and ice, I would drop these down two for your springs and then uh, I believe uh, yeah down two for your springs and then down four again for your anti-roll bars so one two three four and one two three four and then that combined with those differential alterations that will give you a pretty sweet setup for snow and ice Oh, uh, braking as well. Obviously, we're on snow and ice. We have to adjust the brakes. So, for snow and ice, so we went down three for wet weather. So, for snow and ice, we're going to take this down six. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. That should be a pretty decent brake pressure for driving on the snow and ice. For the bias, again, we're going to be taking this down a further 8%. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's done. And then you just adjust your handbrake force to match your braking force again in terms of adjustment. So we're going down six on this. So that pretty much covers everything that I can think of. Obviously, if you have further questions, drop them in the comments below. Um, if you're finding this type of setup related video useful uh please like and subscribe um you guys have been absolutely amazing through the years unfortunately now i'm at a point in my life where work is taking a priority as is my personal life um, so i can't do as many setups uh but i will be still doing some don't worry about that um, it's just not as many and as consistent, but I will be doing more videos like these because I'm guaranteed I've tried my best, but I've probably missed something. So if you've got any questions, uh, like I said, drop them in the comments below um, and I'll let that build up. And what I'll do is then a Q&A video to follow up on this one, uh, because the depths that I go to when I'm creating these setup videos is, well, it borderlines insanity, but it's me. I love it. Um, so I probably haven't covered everything, but like I said, any questions, drop them below and I'll do a follow up video and get some of those questions answered for you. OK, that's everything for today. Thank you very much. Have a great day.